Welcome back to the channel and today I thought we're going to make something really cool. We're going to make some honey in a jar. Um, maybe it's not that cool, I just think it's cool and I thought why not turn it into a tutorial. Maybe somebody would like it. I will be uploading my final result that you see here to my Patreon. All of that's in the description. So if you want to make a scene like this, keep watching. And uh, yeah, let's jump in and make some honey. So let's start by selecting all of the default objects. We're going to press delete. Now we have a fresh scene. We're going to go shift A. Under our mesh options, let's add in a cylinder. Let's tab into edit mode. And we're going to go to our front orthographic and in wireframe. Uh, let's select all these bottom verts and let's go control B to create a bevel. So control B or command B. If you roll your middle mouse button up, you can add some extra segments, which is what we're going to do. Something like that. And then let's select all the top guys here. Let's go control B. Let's do the same thing about this much. And then let's just select these top verts, press X and let's delete those faces. And then maybe let's just select this edge here and go E to extrude and extrude it up like so. So now we have a basic kind of jar. I'm actually going to just select maybe the top bit here and just bring it down a bit. And then I'm going to grab everything, go G, Z, and just move it up till it's sitting on the floor here, like so. So now you can see this is our jar. We're going to go E to extrude, right click. And with that still active, we're going to go Alt S and scale in along the normals like so. And let's just press A to select everything. Let's go Alt N and let's just recalculate the outside just in case we have any bad normals. And let's go ahead and give this a subdivision surface modifier. And now that we have that, let's just select this inside face. And let's just go control plus to grow to selection about up to here. And let's go shift D to duplicate, right click to let go. And then let's go P, separate that selection. Let's tab back out. And now we have this separate object here that we should be able to grab. Now with this guy, we're just gonna tap into edit mode. And in edit mode, we're just going to select all these top verts and we're going to go E to extrude, S to scale, just a tiny bit. E to extrude, S to scale, and then E to extrude, S to scale, and then press F to fill the faces. Then we're going to come in here, Control R, left click once, and just drag it up just to tighten up that edge. So now we have this inside bit, which by the way, if you want to control the height of this, you can just select this and you can increase it or decrease it depending on how full you want your little jar to be. So I'm going to go somewhere about here. So now we have these two items made. Press A to select everything, right click and go shade smooth. So we have a jar of honey and we have the honey in here. Now let's make some of the rest of the stuff. In fact, I'm just gonna save to my desktop, like so. So we're now gonna go Shift A, let's add in a cylinder. We're gonna go G, Z, let's move that guy up and then tab into edit mode, S to scale it down. Let's go about this much. And then we're going to go S, Z, scale it up a little bit. And then go to your edge select option up here. And then you're going to hover over this edge here. You're going to go control R. You can see the yellow line. Um, let's just roll our middle mouse button up uh, this many times. So we have four segments and this is double click. And now we can go control B and bevel those. And let's go something like this. Left click and let's go E to extrude, right click. And then Alt S and let's just scale in along the normals like so, and then let's just select this edge over here, this edge over here, and then go Control B, and let's just give it a bevel, roll the middle mouse button, something like that. Now you can Shift Alt, holding those two in, just select all of these edges along here, on the outside, like so, and then go Control B or Command B, and just give them a slight bevel. Excellent, now let's just grab this face at the top, E to extrude, S to scale, and then G, Z, move it up, and then Control B, just to give that a bevel. That's looking really good. Let's just select this bottom face. And now this is where the fun bit is. You can kind of go E to extrude, S to scale, and now you can kind of shape it however you want. So I'm gonna go E to extrude Z, E to extrude down onto Z, S to scale. And I might just select the whole thing, move it up a bit. And I keep doing this, um, extrude it down, and then E to extrude down, S to scale. E to extrude down onto Z and then go control B to bevel. Um, yeah, something like that. And then you can just, you know, select these edges like so. Control B to bevel them. Um, look, this is really up to you how you want to make this. You can look at some references, but I'm making a really, really basic one here like so. There we go. That's looking pretty cool. And I'm just going to press A to select everything. G, Z, just move it up. Till that little orange dot, which is our origin point, is sitting down at the bottom here. 
That way, if we tab out, we can rotate along that origin point. Right click, go shade smooth, and now we have a honey scoop. Let's just give that a subdivision surface modifier as well to smooth it out even more. So now we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna rotate him, bring him over here. S to maybe scale him up a bit and maybe place him right over here. And in the top view, I might rotate him like so. There we go. And now we're gonna go Shift A, let's add in a cylinder. Let's take the cylinder up like so, tab it to edit mode and let's just bevel the ends like so, just to round them out. And then in object mode, we're just gonna rotate this guy, scale him down, bring him over here, rotate it at the top. And we're just gonna roughly place it kind of at a bit of an offset to the cylinder, something like this. Okay. Just like it's like a, something that can become a blob like that. I guess looking about right. And now we're gonna right click and go shade smooth. And now we're gonna go into our sculpting workspace. This is where things get fun. We're gonna come over here, enable dynamic topology, go okay. Under the dynamic topology, we're gonna to set the detail size to five. And now what we need to do is we need to come here with our clay strips brush. And we should come in here and kind of just add a few strips of clay along here, just to kind of um, decimate it a little bit. And we can maybe bring the strength down up here a little bit and then just sculpt along here and just give it a little bit of volume and make it not look quite as much like a um, cylinder. So something like this. And then we're gonna go ahead, press F to grow the brush and then hold in shift and then just smooth it out with the smooth brush. And we really wanna round it out a little bit in some places so it doesn't look so much like a cylinder like that. So holding in shift with the smooth brush. So it becomes a smooth brush when you hold in shift. Let's just smooth that out a little bit. And then let's go over to our snake hook brush, the snake hook. F to grow the brush. And then we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna grab the bottom here and just kind of drag it down like that. And you might have to come here to the side a little bit. I'm gonna go into wireframe and in my right orthographic view, I'm just gonna drag that guy down and just kind of make like what looks like a drip. Go to the front view and then kind of stretch it out a little bit, like so. And that's looking pretty cool. Now we have kind of like a drip of honey. Very, very basic here, keeping it super simple. And then what you can do is you can come in here and you can kind of just drag some more of these guys like this, just to make it look like little drips of honey. And maybe we'll come over here, just maybe another one like that. Dragging it down. Just making these cool looking little drips. And then drag this out a little bit and maybe just down like that. So you can see we're already making this look a lot better by just having kind of like these droops like this. Maybe grab it over here. Maybe you're going a little bit overboard here, but you kind of get the idea, okay? Just want to make it look like the honey is dripping. Make it look as realistic as possible. Just using our creative um, freedom here. So that's looking pretty cool. I might just drag it in here just a bit. Okay, let's leave it at that. Let's go back into our layout. And now we're going to take this honey bit. We're going to hold and shift and select our honey over here. In fact, let's just select the honey inside here and let's just apply um, that subdivision modifier. And let's grab this, holding and shift, select the honey and then go control J and join them as one object. So you can see they're one object. Then you're gonna go to your modifiers and give it a remesh. Let's make it 0 0.03 and let's enable shade smooth and maybe even a little bit smoother. Let's make it uh, 0 0.01. Okay, that's looking a lot better. So now you can see it fused together as one object here. And it's just looking really cool. So we've now modeled our honey. So now what we can do is the fun bits. We're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a plane. Tab into edit mode and then scale it up and scale it on the X a bit, like so. And what you could do is you can go to the internet. So you can go to something like Polyhaven. So Polyhaven is a great site. And then you're gonna to go to their textures section. And then you can just go over to their wood option here, click on that. And then you can choose from any of these ones you want. I'm gonna be going with the laminate floor here. So once you click on that, 
you can just go ahead and download the zip folder. I've already done that and I have it extracted somewhere on my computer. So I'm just gonna go file, I'm gonna go append. And I already have a place for that in my asset libraries. So that's in my PBR materials folder, but you could just have it in your downloads or wherever. So it's an extracted zip file. I went with the laminate floor 03. You're gonna click on a blend file inside and then go to material and then click on a laminate floor 03. Okay, if you're not sure 100% how, how it works, there's a lot of videos showing you how to download textures on Polyhaven and use them in Blender. I've covered it a few times before, but then you can just simply um, go into your render engine, change it to cycles, and then select that floor, and then go to your um, materials tab here, and then give it that laminate floor. So now if you go Z and you go material preview, look at that, we have a wooden floor. Now we can just select our little wooden spoon here, go ahead, give it that same laminate, material and then you can tab into edit mode and just select everything and then go U and go project from view. And that'll give us a pretty good um, a result there I think. Now let's just select the floor here and let's go click on this little number here to make it its own material and just call it floor standalone and then we can go into our shading workspace and then with that floor standalone we're just gonna go shift a search and get a color ramp place it on the top node here, the top image texture over here. And that way we can desaturate it and also just change it a little bit to make it look different. So I'm gonna go with something like that. And now let's just go shift A, let's add in a area light. Let's give it a strength of 200 and increase the size to three. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see this is what we have. I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate this light, have one coming from the side. Shift D to duplicate, have another one coming from the side. And then maybe duplicate one from the top and then duplicate one coming from the front over here like so. So now we have it nicely lit up. And now we're gonna select our glass jar, give it a new material and let's just call it honey jar. Now let's come to our principle here and let's bring down the trans, bring up the transmission all the way up to one and then bring down our roughness to a very low number like so. And then let's select our honey, go new. Let's just call it honey. And let's go ahead, give it a base color that looks like honey and then bring up the transmission all the way and then bring down the roughness for that as well. So now we can adjust this color a bit and you can see we have some primitive looking honey over here. And we really need to go over to our world properties. And let's just give this a sky texture for now and bring the strength down to 0 0.3, like so. And now we it's looking a lot better. So there we have it. Now let's just go ahead and let's just duplicate this guy over here and move him back like so, and let's go to our front view, shift A, let's add in a camera, and let's just move this camera back. Let's just give that a focal length of 120, and let's just position it here so it's kind of looking at our honey, like so. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see this is our honey here. It's looking pretty cool. I might just grab the honey here make it a bit more saturated, a bit more warm, like so. That's looking really good. And let's duplicate this little honey stick. I'm just gonna um, grab this guy and just rotate him and put him on the floor, like so. I think it just gives it a bit more visual interest. You guys can place this however you want, something like that. Okay, it's looking really good. And let's just select the camera Enable depth of field, click on a little eyedropper and then select the honey stick and then just bring that F stop value down till we got a nice soft focus like so. And that's looking pretty good. I might just come to the world here and mess around with the sun rotation. Okay, that's looking really nice. So now I'm just gonna save and let's go render and render this image. And there we have it guys, a nice simple honey pot with jar here with a honey scoop, scooping some honey. And uh, this is the result we had today. I'll quickly show you guys my original, it's the exact same thing. In fact, I think the one we just did looks maybe even a little bit better. But if this one, I just kind of did the same thing. I just had a bit of a different camera angle 
and I just um, you know messed I just added some different colors to the floor but it's the exact same thing I showed you how to make right now the exact same tutorial and I just added a little bit of bump to my glass so I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial go ahead and make this share it on Instagram or whatever um, different groups you're on and I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.